Face the Week Monday, welcome to Snarly Illustration. I'm reading a biography of poet, author, singer, and cartoonist Shel Silverstein, and wanted to pay homage to his artistic brilliance with today's sketch. We'll learn how to draw heads using Uncle Shelley's bald noggin as our example. I grew up loving Shel Silverstein's work. My mom brought home a pair of poetry books and some audio recordings of his poems. I quickly memorized several of them from his Where the Sidewalk Ends book. Shell's humor and imagination had a powerful impact on my artistic world as a young boy, and I see his influence even today in my own work. His father discouraged him from cartooning and was disappointed in him even when he did start to make a living with his art. His career got its start with Playboy magazine, of all things, where he would regularly contribute written travelogues and cartoons. Shell never set out to produce work for a children's audience, but I'm sure glad that he eventually did. His lifestyle and his ways were unique to him and a bit extreme, but his influence around the world, and to me, is priceless. I wanted to include some of my favorite pieces in this video of his. We'll first hear a recording of Shell performing the poem, Boa Constrictor, after which I'll share my own recital of his poem, Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout Would Not Take the Garbage Out. Finally, we'll catch a glimpse of Shell's beautiful cartooning style prior to the final reveal of my character. Oh, I'm being... I forgot my... I forgot my shoes. By a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. <laughs> I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor and I don't like it. One bit, well, what do you know? It's nibbling my toe. <laughs> oh, gee, it's up to my knee. <laughs> oh, my, it's up to my thigh. <laughs> oh, fiddle, it's up to my middle. <laughs> now the rest, it's up to my chest. <laughs> Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams, and though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds and potato peelings, brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door with bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burnt butter toast, grisly bits of beefy roasts. The garbage roll on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum, cellophane from green bologna, rubbery blubbery macaroni, peanut butter caked and dried, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold french fries and rancid meat, and yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last, the garbage, it reached so high that finally it touched the sky. And all the neighbors moved away, and none of her friends would come to play. Finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, Okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate. And there in the garbage she did hate, poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate, because the hour is much too late. But, children, 
Remember, Sarah Stout, and always take the garbage out. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Shell. And remember these three things as you practice your craft. Curiosity, courage, creativity. Happy drawing.